So first up is uh, Jason Wilinski with the Heritage Research Group, and he's going to give us an update and some background on the Emulsion Task Force. So please welcome Jason. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to, to share what's going on with the Emulsion Task Force. Travis, uh, he had asked me to put together a, a brief uh, description of what the group is working on, where it kind of originated from. So. Uh, Immediately, I reached out to Colin Franco with uh, Rhode Island DOT and Chris Lubers, the chair. So they had some uh, material already prepared. So if it's repetitive for some of you, I apologize. And uh, some of the stuff I'm going to talk about was brought up yesterday as well. So a bit of a refresher from some of the things uh, discussed yesterday by both Travis and Neil. So the Emulsion Task Force formulation, uh, it, it, it resides underneath the, the Pavement Preservation Expert Task Group, which was established in 1991 by uh, Jim Sorensen with the Federal Highway Administration. And it was developed to promote the institutionalization of concepts <clears throat> of pavement preservation. And it is the parent group for the Emulsion Task Force. And I think we're going to hear a little bit more about that group coming on in. And now it, it does reside and it, it does work with the partnerships does now become a part of the ASHTO TSP2 group, which we, were, we, we discussed and learned quite a bit about yesterday as well. The background was kind of an idea. It was developed, the ETF was developed back in 2008 at actually an EMA ISSA era meeting. So EMA is the Asphalt Emulsion Manufacturers Association, ISSA is the International Slurry Seal Association, ERA is the Asphalt Recycling and Reclamation Association. Together, the three groups are PPRA. And the idea was, Let's tie together industry with academia and, and the agencies and, and work together to update the state of the practice and develop and participate in ongoing research activities to better understand how these things are being used, how to develop specifications, and how to, how to better uh, characterize, analyze, and develop these, these pavement systems that we uh, develop. So the first meeting was back in 2008, so the group's been around for almost 11 years now. And the original message, the, the two key messages from the group were advance the effort to develop performance-based methods and specs for emulsions and encourage adoption of uniform performance-based national standards for these preservation treatments. And in order to accomplish that, they set out to develop construction specifications, updated material specs, design practices, develop test methods if needed for those design practices, and develop quality assurance protocol on materials and workman workmanship. It's a real neat group to be a part of. I, uh, I've gotten the opportunity to, to participate in some of the meetings. Uh, like I said, Colin with Rhode Island DOT and Chris Lubers with Crayton are the current co-chairs. And we have a very di diverse group from industry with our EMA, ERA, ISSA members uh, with representation from FP Squared. Uh, academia is involved. Uh, Scott Schuler with Colorado State was heavily involved. Amy Epps at Texas A&M and Richard Kim at North Carolina State as they worked on some of the uh, emulsion, emulsified asphalt uh, performance grade specifications. Get the input from some different DOTs and count lists of some of the DOTs that have participated. Uh, FHWA is also involved, as well as the National Center for Pavement Preservation. So the current subcommittees that now exist within the ETF, the first one, residue recovery and testing. So there's a, a need to develop test specifications to be able to test these emulsion residues to better simulate how they actually come together and, and cure and break uh, in the field. So one of the major efforts in the past was to develop some new recovery methods so that we can better characterize those emulsions as they come together. There's the design group. So this group is the one that works on how do we put these uh, preservation designs together in the lab to, to optimize performance in the field. They also develop supplier certification and quality assurance programs. The fourth subcommittee is the recycling emulsions. So how do we specify, how do we do designs for some of the recycling treatments that use emulsions, the cold in place recycle, the FDR and the cold central plant, which I'll be talking a little bit about tomorrow. There's a research component. So putting together research need statements on uh, developing uh, through TRB and some other organizations on, on which projects would help promote the uh, objectives of the task force. There's a marketing subcommittee. And it's marketing in the sense that as we develop these specifications in these programs, 
How do we get this information out to the users? How do we get it out to the agencies for adoption, promotion, and feedback on how these documents and how they're being used? And the latest one is subcommittee on using rejuvenators in pavement preservation treatments. So early on, four standards were developed. First one was standard practice for certifying emulsion asphalt suppliers. I mentioned the residue recovery. That was a uh, TS Ashto TP72. Um, understanding and determining asphalt binder bond strength. So they developed the test, the bitumen bond strength test. And one that I think is pretty interesting is uh, using performance graded specs for uh, binders for surface treatment. How do we currently characterize our asphalt emulsions? We use a penetration test, right? That's like one of the, one of the single digit ASTM numbers that's been around so long. And we still use that test despite the fact that in the binders that we use for hot mix, they've gone through what, three or four different generations of testing. We had pen and then we had Visco uh, our ACs, then we had super pavement, now we're looking at massacre. So the incentive was, well, if we move away from penetration, is there maybe a better way to characterize these emulsions that we use in these treatments? Um, developed six test methods. The NCHRP Project 680 that Scott Schuler performed created uh, six test methods for chip seal designs. Worked on developing best practices documents for both the chip seals and the microsurfacing. As I mentioned, the low temperature recovery method for uh, recovering those asphalt emulsions and doing lab testing on it in the, in the lab. We mentioned this also yesterday, but ASHTO has commissioned a, a task force to work together to, to help develop these construction guide specifications for these emulsion treatments. That's one of the efforts that the ETF is working on. I know we're working on the construction guidelines for some of the recycle treatments. And, uh, and Larry was really instrumental in setting that up between all the working groups to help get that, that effort moving forward. So the, the three big things that we're focusing and working on now is number one is advancing the effort to develop the performance-based specification for the emulsion binders. That's a special working group that's being led by Mike Voth. Um, there's some research and field studies going on now to better understand uh, that specification and, 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 and how those recommendations originally are working with field studies. I know their project 963 is being worked on. Uh, through the Asphalt Institute and the, the Emulsion ETF, we've actually done some round robin testing to understand how different labs are testing and measuring that data. The second big one is continue to develop the ASHTO standards, but also educate and get the word out there. And I think that's one thing that, it, that uh, I'm going to ask the audience is what can we do better to help promote the use of these specs, get the information out there to everyone, material specs test methods, design practices, and these guide specs. And the third one's finish up and develop those QA protocols and standard for emulsion treatments. So developing research need statements. Are we all familiar with NCHRP 14-37? That's the construction guidelines for chip seals, microservicing, and tack coats. So we want to be able to develop that for some of the emulsion, uh, different uh, asphalt emulsion type treatments. So here are the standards that have actually been put together. You can see the material specs that are listed there for the different treatments as well as the design specifications. Is anyone familiar with these specs or anyone has have used them, reviewed them at all? Some of these provisional specs, I see a couple nods. We also worked together and submitted some of these emulsion binder standards which I talked about. Um, the construction guide specs for the, the chip seal, the microsurfacing, and the fog seal wasn't tech code. I apologize, retract that. But uh, NCHRP 1437, Scott Schuler, uh, Gary Hicks, and Jim Malthrop, among others, uh, had worked on that. So getting that information out there to help establish guidelines, help the uh, agencies develop specifications, uh, that's, that's the goal for, for developing these parts. So the next, well, I guess if you round it all up, is really type of a holistic approach to be able to kind of work through the, the maturation, if you will, the process. So number one is develop the standards. And then working with the other groups to develop that, that quality assurance program for both materials and workmanship, because both of them are important, right? How do we classify the materials? How do we do acceptance testing of the materials used? And we talked about different specs, different materials used for these treatments. 
One, understand independent assurance. Ashto AMRL participates in our meeting and, and microsurfacing is actually one of the newer things that actually labs are getting accredited for and checked on. And I think that really helps advances that the labs that do these type of design work are all kind of calibrated against each other to make sure that if you go to lab A, you can expect similar results from lab B. And I think that helps build confidence in the data that these labs generate. So we talked about workmanship QA. We brought up calibration earlier. It's important to make sure that the tools we're using are performing the way, are, the way they are supposed to in the field. Setting up ideas for construction quality control planning. I know a lot of projects that I get involved with, particularly recycling up front, we have to submit a quality control plan. We have to submit information if there's an issue, how we're going to remediate it. What kind of equipment's going to show up on the job site? That's something we do actually at just-in-time training for some of the jobs that we see in Indiana. We can do that for these pavement preservation treatments as well to help educate the inspectors out on site what to expect on these projects. Another one's personnel cert certification. I think that's a, a really good idea that, you know, a contractor that has trained personnel, they can use that for, to build confidence, if you will, or to build a build trust that, hey, the guys that are out here, they've gone through training, they're understanding what's happening out there. And likewise, I think we can do that also from agency perso uh, personnel from an inspector uh, standpoint. And understanding material certification, it's the same way like we would test a lot of the other materials that we use for construction. We certify asphalt all the time and for hot mix asphalt binders. We can develop similar certification programs for these treatments as well. And then from there, it's developed the education, the training protocols, and the certification programs. And NCPP has been doing a great job on taking the lead on the education and the training for it. So where we're at now is how do we get this information out to the agencies? And, and maybe that's where I can get some help from everyone in this room is these specifications are out there, these documents are coming together. How do we better share with what's coming out through ASHTO, the ETF, and these other groups? I think it's important that the agencies help promote the technology, industries on board. It also helps with academia as well. They can help develop curriculum to students who are gonna see these preservation treatments for the first time once they graduate. So I guess I kind of leave it out there for everyone here in the room is, uh, you know, what can we do better? What can we do different? Because we really want to, uh, to promote the work that's being generated. How do, how do we help share it, get the information out there? I guess any thoughts, questions, comments on that, on that aspect? I, I, I think continuing to participate in these types of meetings <coughs> is one way to get that out. And so, so j just like you are doing now, and just like the, the ETF is, uh, spend time with the, with the users. These are, at, at least at this meeting, these are mid-level users of, of those specifications, right? They may not necessarily be the end user, but they are the mid-level users of, of that. So I think continuing to have the ETF promote the use of those AASHTO standards and these updates um, at, at this meeting and the other partnerships is, is a great way to go. I wouldn't mind seeing some sort of um, marketing information put together through the ETF that we can help uh, educate some public and educate some senior management on on these types of things. I'll second that a little bit. Um, you know, you know, on the, these, you get the the Astro ballots. You know, ten times a year, and you're like, hey, I'll never do this. I have no objections. But yes, whatever. And so you get those in the mail. Like, here's a model spec for chip sills. Like, we've been doing chip sills for 100 years. You know, and I think. Until you go to a meetings like this, you're like, well, why is Ashtar writing a spec for this now? You know, it's like, so I think, you know, getting that, getting that word out that we're trying to uniform, you know, make it uniform is really a key. Uh, just getting the word out to meetings like this. And, um, you know, the industry support it is a big thing, too. Is the reason most of the states are switching to maskers is because basically the binder guys are making us, you know, they're, they're really pushing it, you know, and it's, uh, it's, it's coming from their side because they, don't want to do 12 different elastic recoveries. They want to do mask, you know, 
getting the, the industry to buy in and kind of push it as well, I think, is, is kind of key. But. I love to see the list of all the stuff you've done. One approach that I think might move this from you talking to us to us talking back to you would be to have maybe three states say, I will look at one of these, tre these specs and I'm gonna compare it to my spec and next year we can have a discussion about where are the differences and what, what are the issues that we see. Just an approach. I think that's a great idea if we have any volunteers. Vince, you brought up your chip seal specification. I'd be curious to see how the chip seal specification that's put together compares to the one that, that you guys developed. And we'd be curious to get that feedback. Huh? We will. Okay. I'm counting on you, Greg. Thank you. Well, I'm actually in charge of the spec committee okay. for this group. So we've been trying to work on amassing all of our <coughs> preservation specs. So we'll have all of them that we can review if you want to. I really appreciate that. Thank you for that offer. I'll say I'll, I'll volunteer. I'll, we'll do uh, we'll compare our microsurfing spec, I guess, if you want to okay. do that. We'll take fog. All right. Do all the... All the agencies or any agencies in here have a cold in place recycle spec. You have a special provision? Basically spec. So we find that a lot of states as they as they want to learn about this technology, where do you start with a spec? Right? This is a good place to start. It at least outlines the mixed design requirements. Because a lot of times those are a little bit different. Let's normalize what the requirements ought to be. So I, I, I at least offer to any states that are looking at that technology in particular that that information is out there and available is a good head start to, to develop specifications moving forward with those types of programs. Well, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, the preceding was produced by the National Center for Pavement Preservation. More information can be found on the web at pavementpreservation.org. Additional support provided by Michigan State University.